Hello and welcome to Nirmal Bang, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Hiral Dadia. We have with us Sunil Subramaniam, MD at Sundaram Asset Management, joining in. Welcome to the show, Sunil, and always a pleasure to speak to you and get insights from you. Uh, you. Sunil, my first question coming to you overall is Nifty. We did hit the 18,000 mark, and this was the first time. Sensex at new highs. And with all of this, there is still gloom and doom with regards to where the economy is concerned. Would you say that what the economy is showing you versus what's happening on the healthcare front and what's happening in the markets, there is some bit of a disconnect? Or do you think this is exactly the picture that we, you know, that you were looking forward to? So I would say that uh, there is this disconnect is basically a perceptional disconnect. The reason is that very often market data, which is published in the news and in the media, refers to historic numbers or near-term numbers. Whereas the equity markets and the participants in the equity markets are always forward-looking. So they always have their view. Because if I take a pension fund, right, I'm investing with a 10, 15, 20-year outlook. I want returns over that period, right? So I have a little bit of concern on what's happening today, but is there a sustainability to the revenue stream from the stock market, right? So you may take a government sovereign wealth fund, which is essentially doing permanent perennial, uh, you know, investments. You can take, uh, you know, hedge funds, perhaps take a shorter term view. So the market is a blend of these players, right? And the presence of liquidity from all these players. Now, why is there liquidity? Because internationally, interest rates are near zero, mm. right? And their economies are actually getting this infusion from the Fed and from the ECB in an attempt to boost the economy. Now, a portion of it goes into the economy, but a lot of it goes into the markets of worldwide, right? So the presence of liquidity with the outlook over a medium term means that you have to look at the economic growth. You said gloom and doom. The gloom and doom is only if you have a very nearsighted view. If you take a medium-term view of the Indian economy, I'm sure that I don't see any gloom and doom. On the contrary, given our demographic dividend, given the availability of land, given a very pro-economy, pro-reform government in place, right? And given the problems that China is facing, representing an ideal opportunity for India to capitalize, which where the government has acted through tax rate reduction, through GSTs, through FDI liberalization, and to the most latest PLI scheme. So I think that the Indian economy is set for a very super fast period of growth. And that liquidity which is coming to the Indian market is actually, I would say, betting on that probability that that will happen sooner rather than later. So to me, if you then take the perspective that what is, as an investor, my outlook, right? Am I looking at a 6, 12, 18 month outlook where I want to make a quick buck? Yes. Then what you said, that there is a disconnect between is the economy going to deliver, is that market overvalued, all that comes into play. The moment I say that I'm building towards a three to five year or plus perspective, and I'm expecting the Indian economy the, to reflect in the EPS growth of the companies listed in the stock market, and that will deliver returns to me. I think that we are perfectly placed, and we are in actually a perfect storm because the earnings growth that will actually come through in the next three to five years, I believe, will far exceed what the market is currently expecting. So to that extent, even an 18,000 Nifty or whatever the Sensex is, I think it's just a reflection of the, of the growth of the Indian economy. And I think it will touch new highs in the coming years. So you don't need to worry about these numbers like 18 and uh, you know 50 and all of that. I think we can talk numbers like 25 and 100,000 in the future. I don't want to put a time frame and say, but the point is when the Sensex was at 3,000, there were people talking about, is it overvalued? If you recall, right. When the Sensex was at 10, they said first time five figure, so is the market overvalued? So as long as the earnings stream is going to justify these numbers by themselves don't mean anything. An 18 so, or a 19. So, so Sunil, overall, we're saying there is strong liquidity. Corporate earnings so far have been healthy. Uh, commentaries have been healthy from corporates as well. COVID-19 cases are falling. And that's something which is leading to opening up of the economy. And in concerning to this, you have the government which has come out with the PLI schemes. There is some bit of relief that has come in for the telecom sector as a whole. 
Uh, now you have privatization of Air India as well. So a lot of factors that are coming in together to support the markets, to support the economy. Taking all of this into consideration, would you say that the markets are fairly valued or would you say that with so much support coming in, we are still undervalued and there is still room? So I would say you have to look that at a, from a time frame perspective, right? So if, you, if I say within 18 months, I would say the markets are slightly overvalued, okay? If you take from a period of 18 to 60 months, I would say markets are reasonably valued. And if you take a period of five years plus and you stay invested, I would say today is an excellent time to buy. And so from that five to 10 year perspective, markets are undervalued. So it's essentially a time bucket based approach that I would say on valuation. So depending on where your goals, what are you investing for? When do you need the money? You can take appropriate actions. Right. And overall, right now, if you see in terms of where uh, global markets are concerned, uh, you, we know about tapering what's happening. China is also going through uh, some bit of issues, especially with Evergrande is concerned. You have the power crisis. Commodity prices are touching the roof. So from a global factor perspective, do we see any risk in terms of India? So there's two things, right? When you say risk, I'd like to differentiate market risk from economy risk. Okay, so if I were to take the economy risk first, right, the risk for the Indian economy is that the revival of the world economy gets delayed because India is sitting on surplus labor, young youth willing to work. The problem is India's per capita income being at around $2,000, our people don't have the buying capacity to buy all that we can produce. So inevitably, we have to export to the world. And so if the world doesn't recover fast enough, there is a danger that Indian youth will be unemployed, then that could lead to civil strife, and that could lead to a negative thing. So recovery of the world economy, especially advanced countries, is a critical risk for the Indian economy, right? Now let me talk about the markets. And that is actually a mirror image of what I just said. The biggest risk for the market is a very quick recovery for the world economy. The reason being that the moment the recovery becomes very fast in the advanced countries, the liquidity tap will be withdrawn, the interest rates will start to get hiked. And when that happens is where for the Indian stock markets, if there is a drying up of that liquidity, that could be volatility. So it's a question of what do you want to pray for? Do you want world economy to grow and hence have some stock market risk? Or do you want world economy to be delayed so that stock market can continue to go higher, but the economic recovery will get delayed? So I would prefer the first, that the world economy recover fast, which means that in the short term, there should be volatility for the markets, mm. right? So, so that's the way I would look at the risk factor. So I'd rather hope that India has a robust economic future than that the markets have a robust short-term uptick. Right. So with this, the kind of rally that we've seen right now, it seems that we are comfortable. However, if you see, it's the expensive components of the market that have been contributing to this rally over the last couple of days. The value part of the market has started to contribute slowly, steadily. So do you see that the composition of the rally could be changing from now? There could be some alterations from here on? See, definitely. But I'd like to take a minute to explain growth and value in the Indian context, mm -hmm. right? Because the word value is bandied about very easily by people. But value as defined in advanced economy markets and value in the Indian market are fundamentally different, right? When advanced economies are at a stage of a very steady, stable growth, 2%, 3% kind of a GDP growth, so utilities and companies which have a steady income stream, a steady dividend, those are the kind of value companies that is the traditional definition of value. Now, India is a growth economy, right? Indian economy growth, you know, on a very pessimistic basis should be in the high single digits, right? So in India, for the true value, as in the advanced country sense of the world, is not applicable because if you then look at it, like say PSC banking sector, right? It's it's also it's a huge discount to the private sector banking. Is that value because of that? Is a value because the market is not expecting them to grow. So in India, you need to redefine this concept of value. So what is it then? I would say that there is growth and there is 
growth that is growth that is available at a reasonable price that is value in india because indian economy ultimately every every company every sector has a huge growth potential so issue is that what then qualifies under this indian value which i call as garp is i would say cyclicals for example because when the cyclicals are in a downtrend you don't know when the v shaped recovery of a cyclicals is going to happen so there are periods in time when the market is not confident of that recovery yet happening and so the valuation comes down so this growth at a reasonable price so that future growth of the cyclical is today available at a reasonable price because the past 2 3 years trend has been down now when the cycle turns that's the time when that value will translated into growth and give you very good returns in the market so this garp so that's what i see happening in india that what you mentioned those sectors which are already where the growth is visible versus where the growth is not visible to summarize from my perspective right in india growth and value are visible growth versus not yet visible growth right and so then what you said is correct that what has grown up is the visible growth and what will go up in the coming future will be this not yet visible growth where the research and the study of the underlying fundamentals of companies of sectors of the economy will help fund managers and analysts to pick something which the market doesn't know today hence the value is low the price is low and that will deliver good returns so essentially that's the journey forward and that's why when i talked about this 12 to 18 months versus 18 month plus is that the 12 to 18 month will be will be impacted by the fact that the visible growth is already discounted by the market and hence if there are some negative surprises there will be volatility but in the yet to be seen growth right this 12 to 18 months there can't be much damage because they're already not at great uh, prices right mm. so there but when the economic growth comes in their uh, growth will become visible and they will deliver superior alpha returns to the investor so i think that's uh, sorry for a very long winded answer no, that's but i okay. hope i explained no so absolutely no, that was something which is really interesting and uh, valuable so with this sunil overall if you go to see where would you find value right now in the broader markets and the themes that you can think which would outperform so i would again uh, my answer will be qualified by time okay so in the next 12 to 18 months right uh, it's uh, going to be very difficult to say that there is this value that i can pick because i expect this this tapering the us growth related news announcements all to dominate the mindset right so from a 12 to 18 months i would rather play safe if i have got that view and not try and look for that value to deliver alpha but rather protect my capital and be in a zone for the moment you have a slightly longer time frame to me there are three key sectors which will Uh, be the ultimate value uh, the what about the wealth creating sectors so this one is for me the overall uh, uh, infra space now when i say overall infra space i'm talking about capital goods epc contractors industrials cement building materials steel all that goes because i see infra as leading the indian growth story why do i say that because the government as you know even through the pandemic has continued to focus on infra second the pli scheme which has been announced in so many sectors will first need factories to come up so there's going to be infra push and the third is as the indian economy shows a pent up demand v shaped recovery you will find that lot of private sector have started announcing capex because they fear that in the next 3 years because it takes 2 and 1/2 to 3 years to build fresh capacity so they see that there is going to be a shortfall and they will they have already started announcing and expect that to get implemented so that will be the fundamental driver of growth from an 18 month onwards view pushing to slightly more the discretionary consumption right now what is discretionary consumption i am mm-hmm. saying i remove fmcg from it right so discretionary consumption comes from consumer durables right comes from housing and comes from auto these three uh, while the growth potential is very strong even in the short term the market has already discounted that growth so today those valuations are quite telling you the future for the immediate future but i believe mm. that this infra cycle as it picks up will lead to employment generation and there will be a second leg of boost for discretionary consumption which is sustainable so if you have a slightly longer term view 
i believe that even discretionary consumption at current valuations can deliver good returns to you if you wait for a little bit longer right the third sector to me which i feel will deliver value right through this time frame is the overall bfsi space right when i say bfsi i mean banking financial services insurance all of those spaces where if you see the components there is banks there is private sector banks public sector banks then there are nbfcs good and small large and good and small and no rendering then there are wealth management companies there are broking companies there are insurance companies and there are asset management yeah. companies both of those are in a sweet spot because from the borrowing lending cycle today interest rates are at an all time low right money is liquidity is available in the banking system in plenty thanks to rbi support right and hence there as the indian economy grows their net interest margin should widen because when there is demand for money then the lending rates can go up and banks and good quality mbs are in a sweet spot at the same time i see that this whole uh, employment generation is going to lead to a lot more consumer surplus and consumer surplus partly will go into discretionary consumption to buy better quality vehicles buy bigger houses but partly will go into investments and you are already seeing the impact of that with the number of dmat accounts being opened the number of the sip growth in the mutual fund industry so the investment side of the financial services not just the borrowing lending side will also benefit from this sweet spot so i believe the overall bfsi space is an extremely good place where you can make investments today in a times of a 18 month plus kind of a period so these are the three sectors mm-hmm. that i believe uh, should account for a significant portion of an investor's portfolio right and still overall do you think uh, there could be concerns with regards to where the us fed is concerned because once they start off tapering in november there is a possibility that the excess liquidity from the emerging markets could start draining out so do you think valuations correcting to reasonable levels is something which could be a possibility and that's when we could see that mild dip that could come in uh i agree with you there because see the fed is a slave to data so today the fed is talking about a gentle tapering they're talking about an interest rate hike in 2023 only they are because they are taking the current inflation uptick as a transitory inflation and not a permanent inflation mm-hmm. right the second is that the inflation is supply side and not demand side so so fed is taking time to act they are not in a hurry so the moment the data comes to show demand side inflation going up the moment the gdp numbers and the housing starts and all of that comes better they could actually uh, you know increase the tapering and maybe advance the interest rate so that's the key risk for the markets i agree with you but that's entirely data dependent so one can't predict the data one has to react to the data as and when it comes hence as a suggestion to investors so it's a 12 to 18 month outlook i would suggest to stagger investments because then this intermittent volatility will mean that the truly the buy low sell high will come into play because all those corrections you'll be going on buying something so stagger the investments over the next 12 to 18 months through sip to stp or through just systematically purchasing whenever you there is a market correction would be a more sensible strategy to counter the potential volatility that can come from a higher than expected tapering or an earlier than expected interest rate hike in the us right and overall if you go to see with regards to where the rbi goes as well they've kept the repo rate steady uh, by when do you expect i mean their stance has continued to remain accommodative by when do you think they will start you know s- squeezing out liquidity from the system number one and by when do you expect rate hikes to start so in india there are two factors one domestic one external to take into account okay so domestically if the v shaped recovery comes very fast and demand spikes up then if inflation rises because of demand side effects right so see so far it's been supply side international oil prices go up commodity prices go up or domestic food prices go up is the reason the inflation print was higher the latest data is showing that food inflation is coming down hence there is a comfort but all these three are supply side factors on the demand side there is yet there is a promise of a v shaped recovery but it's not come to a stage where it's hitting the demand inflation the moment that starts happening is when rbi will use interest rates uh, as a tool to calm down that uh, demand side inflation so watch out for the print on the demand side that's number one 
the second thing which would force rbi's hand on interest rates is the us hiking interest rates because when the us hikes interest rates the differential between the two countries has its impact on the currency so if rbi wants to maintain the currency at a reasonable balance they have no choice but to hike interest rates when the us hikes interest rates right now there there is still the divided opinion there because if rbi allows the rupee to weaken a bit that's good for our exports but not good for our imports so rbi will take a balanced approach there so if the us hikes interest rates rbi has a choice that let me depreciate the currency or let me hike interest rates so depending on so far the export growth has been very strong despite the rupee not weakening that's been a very big positive yeah. but in the future if rbi feels that our export led sector needs a weaker currency to support they could allow a gentle depreciation which then means that they will not hike interest rates because the us hikes interest rates so i would say these are the factors you need to see demand side inflation and our export growth story how is that going to decide when rbi will hike interest rates absolutely and these are true factors we should be watching out for as well thank you sunil so much for joining us on the show as always a pleasure to speak to you get insights thank you stay safe and speak to you soon again same to you and to all your viewers okay. thank you subscribe to our youtube channel for in depth interviews of india inc and press the bell icon so that you do not miss our updates